I have always had an affinity for Drew Barrymore. Why? Because we have the exact same birthday. So naturally, when she released her own beautiful air fryer back in 2021, I was very curious about it. So I ordered it from walmart.com. I will have the link for you down below and had it delivered to my house. My initial impression, why yes indeed, it's beautiful. And there we got the beautiful air fryer. And I'm about to unbox and compare the Drew Barrymore beautiful air fryer from Walmart to my trusty Kasori Pro 2. So let's talk about the stats. The beautiful air fryer can only be purchased at walmart.com or in store. It costs $79.99. The Kasori Pro 2 retails for $129.99. The lowest I've seen this go is about $80. And I'm not sure that I've seen this one go on sale. Maybe I've seen it for $10 off, but don't quote me on that. Let's take a look here at the footprint. You can see they are just about the exact same size. The beautiful air fryer is just about 11 inches wide, where the Kasori Pro 2 is about 11 and a half. The beautiful air fryer is just over 13 inches tall, where the Kasori air fryer is just right at about almost 13 inches and for that full depth there you can see we're at about 13 for the beautiful and the Kasori Pro 2 if we add in that handle there is about 13 inches as well. The manufacturer says this one weighs 14 pounds when it's assembled and the Kasori Pro 2 is 12.3 but it actually feels heavier to me than the beautiful one. They are both 1700 watt. This one is 6 quart. This one's 5.8 quart. Let's check out the basket size because we know at the end of the day the basket size is what matters and yes indeed I need to get rid of all of this plastic and you can see it's about nine and a half inches wide and about nine and a half inches this way and then it's about four and a half inches deep where the Kasori air fryer is just about nine inches by nine inches and just about four inches deep but if we just measure the tray itself it's nine inches by nine inches and if we pop it in the air fryer we also lose wow well, a lot of space so comparatively it seems like it's just about the exact amount of space between these two air fryers now I'm gonna go ahead and give this air fryer it's a very first bath which just consists of some nice hot soapy water and I'm gonna use my favorite washcloth and just wipe out the inside with that nice soft warm cloth now I read the instruction manual and for the very first clean, it didn't say anything about doing a dry run, but a lot of other air fryers do recommend you give your air fryer a dry run before you start cooking food. So look at this pretty little interface. My camera is kind of having a hard time picking it up, but you can see here the default preset comes to 400. All right, there's the temperature and time. I'm gonna just go for five minutes and start. There we go. The other thing I like to measure is the sound of the air fryer. So I'll be quiet here for a second. You can see what the decibels is. So it's hitting right about 40 decibels for that sound. Although the beeps were kind of rough, I feel like. Yeah, beeps are hitting upwards of about 75. And yep, that good old factory smell has started. I'm gonna pause that real quick and I just want to note how loud this one is. So you can see this one's hitting about 60 as far as that fan noise and with the beeping, the beeps are not quite as loud. It's hitting like closer to 65 for that that beep noise. Oh, and interesting, can you see? I turned this off to test out the Kasori and you can see we got all the fumes going on. I better make sure there's nothing in there. Wow, can you see that? I don't know if that's picking up. I just better double check there's nothing burning. I mean, I know I looked underneath to make sure there was no plastic and I don't see any up there. But wow, wow, that is for sure smoking. And nice couple little fingerprints there. That's, that's always comforting. All right, well, we'll just let this finish. Come back, let's see, they don't have a preheat button. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that down to like four minutes. And just keep an eye on this burning that's happening back here. All right, it's beeped at me, it's done. Oh, there we go. I don't see anything smoking anymore, so I guess whatever it was, it burnt off. So we're gonna cook up three different foods in both air fryers and compare the results. First thing we're gonna do is french fries. All right, I'm using the Orida Golden Fries. I weighed these puppies out. And you can see they are coming in at about, yep, the exact same amount. Yeah, okay, we're calling that good. And to even up the playing field, I did wanna preheat this air fryer. 
since I just finished running this one. Drop the spread. Air fry. 400 for 15 minutes. And there we go. One thing I'm noticing with this display is that it alternates between the temperature and the time that's left, which I don't know that I'm a big fan of that. It just means I have to be patient and wait for the time to show up if I'm curious of how long it has. I'm also noticing there's nothing on this display that has like a shake reminder button. I'm not sure if it's gonna send me a reminder to shake, but we will see what happens. The Kasori Pro 2, by default, all of these are gonna remind you to shake, but anytime you set any preset or even just manually adjust your time and temperature, you can always turn the shake reminder button on and off. So thumbs up to the Kasori for that feature. One other thing I failed to mention is that they both have a two year warranty. Just note that that beautiful one is not through Walmart, it's through a different company. It's listed in the back of the manual where Kasori, you always would go to the Kasori website to register and fulfill a warranty, which by the way, if you haven't watched it yet, the Kasori one was recalled. I've got a video for you right here all about it, but don't worry if you happen to have that particular air fryer, they are replacing it. All right, we are good halfway through here. I am seeing all the steam coming out of here, of course, and no, it never did a shake reminder for me. So I'm just gonna pull this open, and super interesting, that's already starting to burn. And there's my Kasori shake reminder. So halfway through, we can see not quite as much burning as the beautiful one. We'll let that keep going. This is definitely harder to shake because it's the entire basket, so it's just like heavier in general. So we will let this one keep going. And there we go, yep, six minutes left. Yep, we got a big mess here, by the way. Yes, I know. One thing I'm noticing as these are running, they got about two minutes left. The Kasori is definitely louder. Like, I keep coming up here to the beautiful one and putting my ear really close to it to make sure it's actually running. And it is, it's just noticeably quieter than the Kasori Pro 2. So that's one point for sure for the beautiful. I like how the Kasori counts down the seconds. The beautiful one, let's see. Oh, nope, it did not count down seconds. The beep was kind of quiet. Maybe that's just because the Kasori was loud. Here's the Kasori ending signal. Just like three loud, longer beeps. I think those are kind of nice to just make sure you actually hear that it's done. But let's take these out and see how they look. All right, the beautiful one. Looks like they crisp those up pretty darn good. The Kasori Pro 2. Looking good as well. And side by side comparison, they look like they got cooked pretty much the same. And to compare the taste testing of fries, I would say that they're, oh, look, it's me. Those are my eyeballs. <laughs> they seem, you know, comparative. All right, for the next test, I've got some chicken quesadillas that I bought from Costco. So just quick side note, I love these Costco meal kits. For 16 bucks, we had quesadillas that were like fed all of us. There was like eight of these. We cooked them up last night in the Kasori Dual Blaze, which was awesome because we didn't have to flip at all. I saved two for today and I'm just going to lightly mist and actually I'm gonna flip it into both sides. And I'm just gonna cook these up the way I did last night, which was 380 for about seven minutes. By the way, these are just different presets. You can't like get to the other ones once you press one. So you can pretty much just always count on the fact that you're gonna just air fry. Like the roasting function is just setting it for 35 minutes, where the air fry by default is 400 um, for 20 minutes. So we just have to lower the temperature. And let's take a peek here. It actually goes all the way down to what? Oh my word, this will take forever. Okay, it comes all the way down at 170, I thought. Yeah, here, if we do the dehydrate, it'll come all the way down to 90 there we go and it looks like it does not go higher than 400 so we are gonna do seven minutes at 380 on this one whoops there we go and start and yes I'm gonna want to shake that so I turn on my shake reminder there's my shake reminder Ooh, that looks so good let that finish up and here's my non shake reminder ah uh, did I just shoot I think I just turned it off okay there we go that's also looking good so, shoot, okay, I gotta go back to 380. No, 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 and bring it back down. I think we have three minutes left there. Start, there we go. And that one 
one's done, looking gorgeous. And just waiting for this one to finish up. I've gotta say, it is absolutely beautiful. I have read a lot of reviews though about paint peeling or the front cracking or even melting. Of course, there's always gonna be negative reviews, but out of 895 of those reviews, 145 of those were just one star. And then there was another significant amount of two stars. So that's just kind of the bummer. That's the one thing I really can't test in these situations is longevity. But there, it's done. Two little beeps. So yeah, that's kind of unfortunate. This is why I keep accidentally turning this off because I'm pushing off right here. So that kind of seems to be a silly spot for that power button because one would accidentally turn it off. But there we go. And here's our side-by-side -side comparison. Looks like the beautiful quesadilla is slightly less crispy. Let's take a peek at the other side. Yeah, I would say slightly less crispy compared to the Kasori one. Regardless, these chicken quesadillas from Costco are so easy. It comes to about $2 per quesadilla. Of course, you could make them way cheaper, but sometimes on crazy nights, this is a great alternative. Mm. So good. And for our next test, we're gonna be making bacon. So usually, you know, my lazy cook way, I usually just throw the whole blob of bacon in there and kind of mix it around while I cook it. But for a little bit more consistent testing, I'm just gonna put these four slices of bacon in each little air fryer basket. Now, if I look at my cheat sheet, I got bacon at 380 for about eight minutes, but this was a thicker cut bacon. So I'm just gonna pop it up. I think I'll run it up. 400 and do that same amount of time, eight minutes. The one thing I love about the Kasori air fryer is I can set these presets to whatever I want and it's as simple as just like cranking up the temperature to whatever you want it to be and then you press and hold the preset so it just makes cooking a lot faster. Just wanna give some real time results now that this is cooled down and I can actually touch it and eat it. This is the one from the beautiful air fryer. My husband took the other one. This one is definitely less crispy, like without a doubt, definitely less crispy. Just more soggy, I don't know, it's weird. Just wanna give you that feedback so you would know. By the way, for both of these, I opted to not rotate the bacon just because I want to see what the results were like. The beautiful just beeped at me. Ooh, wow, that looks great. Very good for no flipping. It's like uber crispy there. Definitely cooked perfectly. Maybe even overcooked a smidgy. I did just want to confirm. There's the other one's done now. The cool thing about the beautiful is that it does come with a cooking chart, like a cheat sheet, which is super helpful. A lot of them don't. And you can see here, where did the bacon go? Here's bacon. It did say thick cut 400 for eight to 10 minutes. So I'm just, I guess I needed to know that because it reaffirms that I didn't overcook this. I did exactly what these instructions said for thick cut bacon. Let's take a peek at this one. Ooh, also looks fantastic. This one didn't curl quite as much. I'm not sure that that would make a difference like the air fryer, but it's kind of interesting to compare these side by side. These definitely kind of curled more and the Kasori ones just cooked flatter. So I don't know why that is, but just an interesting thing to note here. The one feature that I absolutely love about the Kasori is that we've got that removable basket. So boom, the grease, it's right there. I can pull that out. It's not as greasy. It's gonna be a lot easier to clean this one. Whereas this one, I gotta move the bacon. And yes, you could let it cool, but I'm just gonna grab a paper towel, pull that out, whoops. There's all the grease. So, I mean, it's not terrible, but it's just super kind of handy. It's just kind of my favorite thing actually to lift and release and get the bacon away from all the grease. I guess I'm not doing a great job of keeping score on what, but overall my experience cooking bacon, I just enjoy it more in the Kasori than an air fryer with a tray. And I just kind of thought, these cooked up a little bit differently, but who knows what the science is there, right? All right, and our last test, it's the doozy. We've got whole chickens we're gonna cook up in both of these air fryers. The only disappointing problem here is that I couldn't find two whole chickens that were like super, super close in weight. So I've got one here that's just over five pounds. The other one is just over four pounds. So what I'm gonna do is just see which one fits in each air fryer better, and then I'm gonna go with that. So hopefully that won't skew the results too much. One quick little side note as I'm cleaning this is that it's just kind of a pain with those ridges and things. So not really one of my favorite things to have to clean. I mean, what is fun to clean? I don't know. But I do want to note that the manual says it. The basket and the tray are indeed dishwasher safe. But anyway, just one thing to consider if you are shopping for an air fryer, the clean 
ease, ease of clean. It's kind of an important thing. All right, so this recipe is in my cookbook. You can get it at yummyairfryerecipes.com. It's on page 69 and it's crazy easy, you guys. We just make a delicious spice rub. I've got one for each bird. It's a teaspoon of rosemary, a teaspoon of oregano, a teaspoon of pepper, and a half teaspoon of each. Thyme, sage, ground mustard, garlic powder, onion powder, and then a quarter teaspoon of basil, and one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt. And it's super easy. I just always open up the lids, pop everything into one bowl, and then make my rub. And then if you wash your chicken, wash it. If you don't, that's fine too. You're gonna pat the chicken dry, which we've already done. So overall, you just wanna put some avocado oil on. And the point of that is to, number one, get the skin all crispy, but it's gonna help these seasonings stay right on the bird and just massage it all over. The thing to keep in mind is you just wanna get all those little cracks and crevices. You could even like lift up the skin and throw some seasoning down under the skin if you want. Just rub it all over. So we're gonna take the breast side of the bird and just roll it down here. I'm hoping this one's gonna fit here. Yep, it looks like it's gonna fit very nicely. This is the five pounder. And then here's my four pounder in the kasori. Oh, there we go. Pop that right in the air fryer. And these we're gonna do for 40 minutes at 350 degrees and then we're gonna rotate it. So start. And this one, same thing, 350 for 40 minutes as well. All right, got a little beep notification. Okay, here we go. Let's take a peek here. Hey, looking good. It didn't burn on top. It's nice and roasted. And the kasori up next, also looking nice. Looking beautiful browning. Okay, now it's the tricky part. Uh, we've got to like shove the tongs in here to lift the chicken and then we're just gonna flip that over so we can gross up this side and pop that in we're gonna bring it back to that 350 oh how nice it remembered where it was at and now we're gonna do like 15 more minutes it could be anywhere from 15 to 25 minutes just depending on the size and all those good things I'm gonna just start with 15 and we'll start and I've just rotated this one and it's interesting how this one has a little bit more browning I'm seeing on the bottom compared to the beautiful one but there we go 350 15 minutes just something I want to say whenever I do these reviews and I compare one air fryer to a Kasori air fryer. I always get people that are say, oh, that's Kasori sponsored. She's Kasori biased. Just letting you know, yeah, I am a little bit biased because this has really unfailed me for more than two years. And, but no, it's not sponsored. Neither air fryer would ever sponsor me in a comparison video, like ever. So usually sponsorships have non-compete clauses. So no, none of my comparison videos have been sponsored. This is 100% my test, my opinion, so there you go. And 15 minutes later, here we are. And, oh, how sad that skin came off. How did that happen? I'm gonna take the temperature right here, go deep in the breast. Okay, that's looking good, because we can sit and let this rest. And yes, I think this one's ready. Why did this happen, little chicken? Yep, this is Definitely all done. I'm gonna let these rest. Do you see all those juices popping in here? Just give this a few minutes to let it rest and we'll cut into it. All right, there is the final side-by-side -side comparison. It's not like crazy crispy here, but it's not terrible. Remember, this one is the beautiful one. This is the Kasori one. And now I'm gonna try and cut into this beautifully. Mm -mm. Nice and juicy, looking good. And let's take a chop in this one. I'd say this one also did a really nice job cooking up that chicken. So this one even looks a little more juicy. So I'm guessing because I put the five pounder in the beautiful one and the kasori one, I cooked them the same amount of time. So that probably explains that I lightly overcooked the four pound one, just a smidgy. And look who's home from school, ready to have a taste test. Chicken. That's the Kusori one. You want more? Overall, yes, I slightly overcooked the Kusori that was a pound smaller, but comparatively, they turned out really good. So what's my take? What do I think about the beautiful air fryer by Drew Barrymore sold at Walmart? I think it did a decent job. I think it lacks some features that I really like about the Kusori. I like the shake reminder. I don't really like the functions um, of the panel here. I think it's really lax a little bit. Not very many presets. Presets hide once you select one. You can't, like you have to turn it off to hit it grease everywhere. 
but I do think it's obviously way beautiful. Beautiful to have on your counter. All the different color selections they, that they have is super cool. The only thing I can't say is longevity, like I mentioned earlier, so just not sure how long this is gonna last, but overall, a decent starter air fryer for the price, but will this one stay in my house? Probably not, I'll probably give this one away, find somebody here locally. And that's just because my Kasori Pro 2 or my Dual Blaze, they just win at the end of the day. So you can see my review of the top four air fryers that I recommend, what I like and what I don't like about them, and heck, I've got a bunch of fast and easy recipes for you right here. Thanks for watching, I'll see you on the next video.